Good to have you here today. This is a special day for us at Dale Wood. It's the first time I, as the transitional interim pastor, and you as the congregation, get to share in, at the Lord's table, get to share the Lord's Supper. So we are glad to be doing that. You may or may not know that today, October 2nd, 2022, is World Communion Day. That means that uh, churches uh, of many different denominations all across the world, actually, across America and across the, United, uh, across the whole world, uh, are observing the Lord's Supper uh, today. So we, uh, we kind of are a part of something much, much larger as we observe the Lord. Actually, I'll admit to you, when Jonathan and I scheduled this first Sunday in October to have that, that was not even in my mind at that time. I didn't remember that. Uh, but as I kind of did some research, I saw that that's happening today. It began in 1930, way back then. Y'all all remember that, don't you? No, uh, we, we, I don't think any of us are here to qualify for that particular one. I was close, but I don't qualify for 1930. Uh, in a Presbyterian congregation, uh, one of the men thought that it would be good if, if all of the Presbyterian churches would observe the Lord's Supper on the same Sunday, and so they did that the first Sunday in October, and it just grew and grew over the years until now they call it World Communion Day or World Communion Sunday. So we're, we're glad to have you here for this. We have some guests with us, and we have members here, and we, so we welcome you back, and we welcome you uh, here uh, today for this very special uh, service. Uh, it's, it's a joy to be together to worship, and that's what we're going to do today. We're going to worship the Lord. And uh, you notice that the, the songs will have to do with the gospel, the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus, because the gospel is wrapped up in communion, in the Lord's Supper. Communion is both vertical as we commune uh, with the Lord Jesus, uh, who, who gave us the gospel. He is the gospel living. And it's horizontal because we share it uh, together. There is a communion of the saints that we uh, share together. So uh, we, our, our songs are along that line and uh, we'll pray along that line and our scripture and our sermon is along that line. I will go ahead and tell you this. I, have, I began last Sunday a short series on spiritual warfare called God's Army. And knowing that we had uh, gone ahead and scheduled the Lord's Supper for this first Sunday, I thought, well, I'll just break away from that and uh, just uh, pick back up on uh, God's Army the next Sunday. When as I began to prepare and study the Scripture and so forth, I realized there is a very direct connection with God's Army and the Lord's Table. Uh, so I'm going to be preaching this morning on uh, God's soldiers and uh, the Lord's soldiers and the Lord's Supper. And I believe that the songs and everything will all fit in uh, with that. And so we welcome you here today. Jonathan, I know you and your team are ready to lead us in uh, worship. And we invite you and Lindsay and Haley to come on up and to lead us as we uh, worship together today. And our first song has to do... Uh, with praising the Lord because of His great things He has done and then how He, has, he turns graves into gardens and uh, that's what uh, the Lord's Supper is all about too. So good to have you all leading us and we will worship together. Right. Well, thank you, Brother Mike. And uh, as he said, it's so great to see all of you here this morning, whether it's your first time here with us or you've been here for years or somewhere in between, we're just so glad that we're all here to worship together. And it's, it is a special Sunday as we take the Lord's Supper this morning. And I want us to think about that as we uh, worship together this morning. Uh, but we'll start with the song called Great Things, and we'll celebrate the great things that God has done. So would you stand and sing with me as we sing this song together? Worship our King, 
Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. You conquer the grave, you free every captive, you break every chain. Oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great things. Not afraid to 
show you my weakness, my failures and flaws. Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me friend. Because the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. There's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Let's sing that again. Oh, there's into gardens, and as we remember from Ezekiel 37 last Sunday, turns bones into armies, and thank His holy name and praise His holy name that He does that. Today I want to call you to prayer particularly about one matter, and that is disaster relief. You know that we've had Ian who's done all of its damage and all of its uh, work that has uh, been widespread. Uh, we thought that our daughter Melody and her husband Brent serving a church in Clearwater, Florida were going to be under the impact of that horrible storm. It turned south instead of really doing damage uh, to their home and church and we're grateful for that but we're still lifting up in prayer those who have uh, experienced such devastation and loss. Jonathan and I were talking this week about disaster relief. You know, you hear a lot about the Red Cross and you hear a lot about FEMA and other organizations that certainly do good things. We don't hear as much nationally about one of the great, great disaster relief organizations that Southern Baptists have. And our ministries of uh, disaster relief are very significant. If you look around almost any picture where there's been a horrible flood or a storm or whatever, you'll see men and women in yellow t-shirts and yellow baseball caps, and they will be uh, disaster relief Southern Baptists who are taking meals and uh, taking other help in uh, for those who are first responders and so forth, as well as those who are needing relief because of uh, the disaster they've been through. I asked Jonathan to say a word to us about that before we 
uh, enter into the prayer time, just kind of a testimony from his own personal experience. And Jonathan, if you'll do that for us. Absolutely. So uh, five years ago when Hurricane Harvey hit the Houston area, uh, I was serving in a church in the Nolensville Brentwood area, and uh, we decided to take a group and get trained to go serve with Southern Baptist Disaster Relief. And so we brought seven of us down uh, from Nashville area uh, down to Houston to serve with uh, the Hurricane Harvey cleanup. And I have to tell you that the, the expanse of the operation just blew my mind. Uh, as we went through this large church parking lot, we were, uh, the home base for operations was at Sugarland Baptist Church, which is this uh, large church, has about 3,000 worship every Sunday. And one of their parking lots was full of the relief teams. Uh, there's a group from East Tennessee in the Kingsport area that brought an 18-wheel semi down that had a feeding truck that can feed hundreds of people a day. And so as people who were hit by the hurricane didn't have any power, didn't have a way to cook food, they were able to serve food to those people. And they also served food to other relief workers from the Red Cross and other organizations in the area, including our teams as well. Um, there were uh, teams that were doing uh, what they call mud out. So people whose houses were hit it, on the outside didn't really look like it had been that bad. But on the inside, everything was ruined from all the water and mud that came in through the hurricane. And so teams that are trained on how to get the mud out of the houses and uh, how to, to work with that cleanup and people to evaluate and help with insurance claims and all that kind of thing. Uh, but the, um, the, the work that our Southern Baptist Disaster Relief does is just amazing. And I had no idea until I was down there with them and got to be a small part of that. And so uh, this week, as we know, a hurricane has hit Florida. Uh, Southern Baptist teams here from Tennessee and up in Kentucky have gone down to serve. And so we want to lift them up in prayer as they uh, serve and they minister to people down there. Uh, I believe, I'm going to double check and make sure I've got the facts straight here, but I believe Sarasota, Florida is where they are based. Yes, First Baptist Sarasota will be the place that they all work out of in this relief operation. And so Tennessee is sending teams down there. The feeding truck is coming from Kentucky this time, but Tennessee is uh, sending other teams down to help with uh, chainsaw crews and mud out crews and evaluation crews and all those kinds of things, sending chaplains to minister to people who are grieving and mourning the loss of their belongings. Um, but we have a, a, a big thing that we can pray for as we pray for the people in Florida and uh, other places that are recovering. We can also pray for people from right here in our state who are going down to serve in this hurricane cleanup. Amen. And all of God's people said, amen. It's great to be a part of that and thinking about uh, what we, you know, when we give our offerings, uh, we give part of that goes to our statewide uh, disaster relief teams and so forth. So uh, our tithes and offerings help uh, support that ministry, and we praise the Lord for the opportunity to be a part of that. So let's enter into the time of prayer today, if you'll join me please as we pray. And uh, first of all, this morning, I'd like for us to pray for families who are grieving for the loss of loved ones. Uh, some of them certainly include those in the disaster areas where lives have been taken. And then we get more closer to home. We've had uh, deaths in our own church family. And this past week, even uh, one of our grieving families, we're, we've ministered uh, to them. And uh, we know that uh, people that go through grief really do need our prayers and our encouragement and the comfort that only the Spirit of God can give. And that happens so often through the prayers and support of God's people. You probably can think of someone today who is going through some kind of disaster. Maybe it's not caused by Ian. Maybe it's not caused by any other, what we call, sometimes call natural disasters, like flood and wind and rain and so forth. Maybe there's a spiritual disaster happening in some people that you know. Their lives were intact and now they're not. Their marriages were okay and, and now they're not. Their finances were all right, but not now. They've experienced disaster. It may be that even you in your own life have experienced a, maybe a smaller disaster that we're talk, than we're talking about, but something that is happening in your own very life today or someone very, very close to you. I'm so thankful that the main disaster relief that we know about is what God does in picking up broken pieces and putting us back together again. That's certainly the theme of the gospel. That's the theme of the Lord's Supper. The scripture that we're using today that God is the ultimate disaster relief 
provider for us and how we praise Him. You know, one of the things that happen in these disaster situations is our people go and share the gospel. They do not try to just grab a captive audience and put them under more stress by sharing with them the truth of the gospel, but out of their care, they oftentimes have listening ears and open hearts, and they can share the Lord Jesus Christ. Almost every disaster results in many, many people coming to know Jesus Christ and confessing Christ as Savior and Lord. And so I think what we pray for is any of our friends and ourselves going through some sort of loss and disaster, that out of it will come the glory to God and to the gospel. So today I'm not going to ask you to necessarily stand or lift your hand. I'm just going to pray for all of our church family this morning, every person here, every guest who's come to be with us this morning. I want to be praying for you so you can know that as I've looked around the congregation this morning, I've seen your faces. I'm knowing your names. And more important than that, God sees your faces. He knows your names. And He knows what you're dealing with. And so today, Father, we come into your presence thanking you for the privilege of prayer. Yes, you have done great things. Yes, you are a great and mighty God. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You have done great things. But you are doing great things also. Father, we pray for the Elwood Baptist Church. We pay, pray for the Awakened Church of Nashville that begins meeting here this afternoon. We pray, Lord, that your spirit would anoint their work, a, a new and challenging work here in East Nashville. And we pray, Lord, that they will also be blessed, that this building right here will just be an atmosphere of the presence of God. And this morning, right now, and this afternoon, later today, there will be lives touched and changed through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for hearing us today. We confess our sins to you. We know that we're sinners, but we thank you that salvation is ours through Jesus Christ our Lord. And we pray that today you will speak to us very, very clearly from the pulpit, and from the Lord's table. In Jesus' name, amen. And let's stand as we continue. Savior say, thy strength indeed is small, child of weakness, watch and pray, find in me thine all in all, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe, sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. But now indeed I find Thy power and Thine alone Can change a leper's spots And melt the heart of stone paid it all all to him I owe sin had left a crimson stain he washed it white as snow and when before the throne I stand in him complete Jesus 
has died my soul to save, my lips shall still repeat. Let's repeat it together. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. And all God's people said, Amen. You may be seated. We come to the time of giving back to God out of His goodness to us. You know, we are told in the Scripture to bring the tithes into the storehouse. Tithing means 10% of our income. We bring that to the storehouse where it's uh, distributed for God's glory and for other people's good uh, really throughout the, the world. And then we're also told in the scriptures not just to bring the tithe, but to bring offerings as well. Offerings means above the tithe. And you and I are privileged to be able to give this morning. What a blessing that is. And I know our deacon's going to come and lead us in prayer, and we're going to receive our offering today. Don will lead us as we pray. Let us pray. Our glorious and kind Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful fall day. We do pray that the tithes and offerings will be used to further your kingdom. We also pray for those who are affected by fires and hurricanes and tornadoes and floods, that some, these funds sometimes will be used to help them. You are the one and only true king, the king of kings. Be with us and watch over us during this service and we pray that brother mike touches someone's heart that doesn't know you In christ's name we pray amen sing with me the blood. 
the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Oh, the blood, our victory, our salvation, everything depends on that. Hallelujah. Lindsay, thank you for that song, and Jonathan and Haley, thank you for leading us in worship this morning and congregation. Uh, I'll just tell you, my heart is very stirred this morning to think about what we are privileged to do in the next few minutes. One thing is we're privileged to read the Word of God. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning with verse 23 and going through verse 28. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 28. Would you stand with me, please, as we honor the Word of God? You know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans... 1 Corinthians, so we're there in 1 Corinthians and uh, reading where the Apostle Paul reminds people of what happened the night of the Lord's Supper. And beginning in verse 23, he says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that, and here's where our text begins, the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread... And drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. So he was saying, even though this is a potential dangerous thing to do it's the thing we're to do and we'll talk about that in a moment father speak to us this morning from your word and from the lord's supper in jesus name amen you may be seated please i told you that i was uh, thinking that i might just get away from this series on uh, the god's army And then as I began to think about this morning and the significance of coming to the Lord's table, I realized that uh, really it's very appropriate that we continue uh, this series. Two things uh, came to my mind, two quotes that I heard. 
Uh, one was a quote from a uh, man whose name is James, Dr. James Gall, G-O-L-L. And here's what he said. Communion, the Lord's Supper, is one of the highest and most overlooked weapons of spiritual warfare. Really? One of the most overlooked and yet highest sp- uh, example of spiritual warfare, the weapons of spiritual warfare. And so we might ask the question, so, so why is that? Because, friends, we are celebrating the finished work of Christ on the cross. We are declaring what the blood of the Lamb of God has accomplished. So Satan does not like people doing that. He does not like congregations doing it. He does not like individuals doing it. He doesn't like us singing about, oh, the blood of Jesus Christ. He doesn't like us doing what we're doing. So that quote, but then another quote from Dr. Tony Evans. Many of you are aware of him. I'll give you that quote in just a minute. But let me tell you that when I was pastor at First Baptist Norcross, we had a Norcross High School uh, football team meal every Friday afternoon before the Friday evening game. If the game was away somewhere else other than Norcross, we had it a good bit earlier in the day so they would be able to get over there. And it was, uh, it was quite a meal. I mean, it was always a delicious steak and then potatoes and bread and uh, so forth for the high school ball team. At one point, the coach contacted me and he said, you know, we've gotten a, a little bit of pressure about the fact that you all serve a meal to the team and then you have a, a Christian devotional uh, after that. And so, uh, you know, some of the uh, people have put some pressure on me to say uh, they can do the meal, but we're going to have to just stop that devotion. You know, that was a time when a lot of stuff like that was going on. And I said, well, I tell you what, uh, we're not going to stop the devotion, but we can stop the meal. So uh, if, you, uh, if you choose not to have us do the devotion then we'll choose not to uh, serve the meal because that's part of what we're doing as a ministry. We're, we're giving that meal, uh, but we're sharing uh, the gospel of Christ. And by the way, a number of them uh, did make commitments to Christ and so forth over the years of, of serving uh, that meal. But the purpose of the meal was this, not only for us to share the gospel, it was to give nutrition to that team as they went out on the field to face the enemy. So... Here's what Tony Evans says about that. He says, the pregame meal provides the nutritional value that he's talking about NBA teams and NFL teams at that time that they need in order to wage war on the field against folks who are trying to stop them. And then I've got the rest of the quote on the screen here. When you come to the communion table on Sunday, you eat the bread and you drink the cup It is to give you the power you need to fight your spiritual enemy. Communion is designed to help you enter the world differently because you enter it with the power from on high. Amen? Tony Evans' word. So with that in mind today, I want to just uh, think about how the Lord's Supper shows us some things. Number one, the Lord's Supper shows us that the the battle that was won in the past. We read there that the Apostle Paul was saying, when the very night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he spoke to his disciples and said, this is my body broken for you. He took the cup and said, this is my blood that was shed for you. It was a battle that took place in the past. Jesus died on the cross. Jesus suffered and bled and died. His body was broken. His blood was given. That was the picture of the gospel that God himself in the flesh gave his body for us. His body. You know, we think about the body. You can't turn the television on without somebody talking about something related to your body. Your body is health, your body is hair, your body is skin, uh, your body is bones, uh, your body is exercise, the body. Well, Christ Jesus was God in a body. And he's saying to us that the gospel is, I'm giving my body for you, that holy incarnate body. 
that was conceived in the womb of Mary by the power of the Holy Spirit grew into a man and gave himself on the cross, the body, the blood, the betrayal, even the Apostle Paul mentioned. That very night he was betrayed. In other words, the beginning of the gospel, the beginning of Christ Jesus giving his life for us was, hap was happening there at the table when Jesus gathered his disciples around him. We sometimes call it the Last Supper. And one reason we call it the Last Supper, that's not in the scripture. We call it that because of the famous painting of the Last Supper that was painted, uh, an artist's conception of Jesus and his disciples around that table. But it is the Lord's Supper, and it's called that in Scripture, and it, is, it represents that battle that was uh, fought in the past when Jesus died on the cross and Satan and came with all of his forces against Christ, thinking this is going to be the end, but of course it wasn't, the battle that was won in the past. But then there's also in this scripture the battle that will be won in the future because it wraps up after talking about the, the betrayal, the body, and the blood of Christ. In verse 26 it says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Think about those three words. Till he comes. This Lord's Supper should not just cause us to look back to the past and think about what Jesus did on the cross and how he gave his life in love for us. It ought to make us look to the future and think about someday he's coming back again. Jesus will return for his children and we can know that that's going to happen. You know, I know everybody doesn't share what I'm getting ready to say right now, but I believe that return of Jesus is going to be in two phases, so to speak. I think, first of all, Jesus is going to come back in a rapture and take his saints home uh, with him. There's going to be that uh, cataclysmic moment in time when all of the true believers will depart from this earth and we'll be caught up together with the Lord in the air, as the scripture says. And then there will be a second part after a time of tribulation here on this earth, probably seven years or so, when Jesus comes back. And that part is found in Revelation chapter 19, and it's very clear about that. Revelation 19, verse 11 and following. And here is John's understanding of what's going to happen in the future. And he said, Now I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And who, he who sat on him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he judges and he makes war. There's that final battle in the future. His eyes were like a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no one knew except himself. And he was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name was called the Word of God. And the armies of heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, and with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God, and he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. When we come to celebrate the Lord's Supper, we not only think about the battle that was won in the past, we think about the battle that will be won in the future when the Lord Jesus Christ returns. His rapture, his return, his rewards that he brings as a result of that final battle. I mean, we're picturing all that here today as we eat the bread and as we drink out of the cup. And then there's a third thing in this same scripture. Not only the battle that was won in the past, the battle that will be won in the future, but there's the battle that's being won right now in the present. Because as the Apostle Paul said that about we show the Lord's death till he comes, then he added in verse 27, therefore, whoever eats this bread or, or drinks this and drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and then let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. There is also another battle represented here at the table and that is the battle being won in the present right now. There is a battle, there's a battle going on right here this morning among us and what I mean by that is the battle to do God's will 
or the battle to do our own will. And so the Apostle Paul said, examine yourself. I don't know if your parents ever said this to you or not, but I do remember my mama on certain occasions saying, Michael, do not play at the table. Don't play at the table. You know, you, you come in there, and maybe it's something you're not really wanting too much, and you just push your food around, or you, you mess around some other way like that. Don't, don't, uh, don't play with your food. Don't, don't play at the plate. Don't, don't play at the table. Well, I believe the Lord looks at his people and says, listen, don't play at the table. This is serious business today. As we come to the table of the Lord, we are to examine ourselves. We are to, we are to take the bread. Yes, we are to take the cup. Yes, I remember an English pastor talking about a, a lady who slipped into a service one morning and they were having the Lord's Supper. And she was kind of a, a homeless person, I guess you could say. And she had had a hard time. And as the deacon started around to give her the tray, she put her hands up like this, like, no, no, I'm not worthy. The pastor was sitting close, and he leaned over to her, and he said, take it, Lassie, take it. It's for sinners like you and me. And I think that's what we do when we come. We say, no, you know, I, I'm, I'm not worthy of taking the Lord's uh, blood and taking his bread. And, of course, it doesn't become the blood and and body of, of Christ, but it's symbolic that it does, that we, we have the presence of God here in a very real way, and so through symbol, we, we don't play at this. This is serious business, this battle that's being waged right now in the present. You know, I love the words of Bill and Gloria Gaither. Uh, years ago, they, they wrote these words. There's a line that's been drawn through the ages. On that line stands an old rugged cross. On the cross, a battle is raging for the gain of man's soul or his loss. On one side march the forces of evil, all the demons and devils of hell. On the other, the angels of glory, and they meet on Golgotha's hill. The earth shakes with the force of the conflict. The sun refuses to shine. For there hangs God's Son in the balance. And even though, even through the darkness, he cries, It is finished. The battle is over. It is finished. There will be no more war. It is finished. The end of the conflict. It is finished. And Jesus is Lord. And then the song goes on. Yet, in my heart, the battle was still raging. Not all prisoners of war had gone home. There were battlefields of my own making. I didn't know the war had been won. Then I heard that the king of all ages had won all the battles for me, and the victory was mine for the claiming. And now praise his name, I am free. It is finished. The battle is over. It is finished. There is no more war. It is finished. The end of the conflict. It is finished, and Jesus is Lord. He is Lord. Jesus is Lord. He is Lord. And God's people said, Amen. And so today, I want to tell you that we do not have to keep fighting that battle within. We can examine our own hearts, and we can settle that matter once and for all with Jesus Christ who died, who was buried, who rose again, the battle is ended that we can uh, so easily be fighting among ourselves and within our own hearts. So, this scripture is very clear. There's a war going on. This scripture is very clear. There's a, there's a connection between the Lord's Supper and the Lord's soldiers. And today, we want to understand that and we want to experience it. So, I'm going to come down now to the table... And you and I are going to, I'm going to quit that noise, whatever I'm doing. You and I are going to be privileged to participate in the war of the past and the war of the future and the war right now. The battle that Jesus waged on the cross is clearly demonstrated. The battle that one day will be won by the one who rides that white horse with the 
It's his name, the banner across him saying, the Word, the living Word of God, the Lord Jesus, and the battle that any of us might be dealing with right here today. I don't know what that bat battle might be. You might be battling with a, a sense of, of unworthiness. You might be battling with a sense of sin. Maybe there's a habit that you've just gotten caught up in that can't seem to, can't seem to get a victory over. Maybe today there's something that's going on in, in your life. Maybe there's somebody that you're really so caring about. Someone who's lost. Someone who's unchurched. Someone who ha is not following the Lord. Maybe in your family or a neighbor or a close friend or a wo worker, a co-worker. The great thing is today we can come in behalf of those battles and we can say, Jesus won the battle there. He will win the ultimate battle there. And he will win this battle for us here if we'll just turn the battle over to him. So we're going to have our deacons come and they're going to serve us uh, a, a tray. It will contain a cup and it will contain another cup. One cup has in it the juice, the fruit of the vine that represents the blood of Christ. The other contains a little morsel of unleavened bread that represents the body of Jesus. And we encourage you to go ahead and take both of those cups, one out of one side of the tray, one out of the other side of the tray, and just hold on to those, and then we'll worship together with those. Gentlemen, if you will come forward at this time, I'll have the privilege to lead us in a blessing, and we will distribute this together. Father, thank you for the broken bread that represents the broken body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the fruit of the vine that represents the blood of Jesus Christ. As we take the cup that has the broken bread in it, may we sense the brokenness of your body for us. As we look into that cup that just sparkles with the juice in the cup, see the lights reflected from above down in that juice. May we think about the blood of Jesus Christ shed for us. Lord Jesus, you were willing to give that ultimate sacrifice that we might live and have life abundantly. So today, Father, help us to sense that and see it and be in your presence in a very clear way. Whatever examination we ought to have about our motives, about our words, about our deeds, about our attitudes. Please help us to examine our hearts as we think about the price you paid in the past, the victory you'll win in the future, and the victory that is ours through you right now and here in this place. In Jesus' name, amen.
night, Jesus took bread and he said, This is my body that was broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. And the Bible says that that same evening, after dinner, Jesus took the cup and he said, This is the blood of the new covenant, the blood that was shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink ye all of it in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we often give a prayer of thanks before we eat a meal. But if any prayer of thanks was ever deserved, it's after this particular meal, your Lord's Supper. Jesus, you gave us a picture of your broken body and your freely given blood. And tonight, this morning, rather, we have taken that picture and we've lived it. We tasted that unleavened bread. We sipped that fruit of the vine that represents your blood. And so, Jesus, we've entered into the gospel this morning. And we have experienced an internal battle that goes on between Satan and our own flesh. And we've examined our hearts. And we thank you for the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, we have thought about the battle that was won at the cross and the one that will ultimately be won from the clouds. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you fought the battle for us. And even when there are those experiences in our lives where we're still fighting the battle, thank you that we can examine our hearts and see that the victory has been won. There's not a man of us here this morning that can't live in total victory. There's not a woman here that cannot live in total victory because of what you've done. So we pray that this pre-game meal, so to speak, Lord Jesus, would give us the nutrients and the strength that we need to be those soldiers out on the field. Not a one of us here this morning know what we'll have to face even this afternoon or this evening or this next week. And yet, we have that strength and that power through Jesus Christ who gave His body and His blood that very night that he was betrayed for us. And he's a king and captain high who will be coming by and by. And we await that time. But in the meantime, battles are to be won. And I pray that you will give us the victory in Christ Jesus. Heads are still bowed and eyes are still closed. Just this moment. We're going to have our invitation song. Jonathan and Lindsay and Haley are going to lead us in it. And uh, here's what I'm going to invite you to do this morning. Of course, the doors of our church are open. If you felt led to become a part of this congregation, I can't think of a better service in which to unite with us than when we've gathered at the Lord's table. And I, I invite you to come and, and join in the battle that we're going to be dealing with, the battle for men's souls and women's souls. Part of it, we invite you to come. There may be somebody here today, and you think, Brother Mike, that's just us. Maybe somebody here, and you have wrestled with this thing of the assurance of salvation, and you're just not absolutely certain that you have truly been born again. Well, let me say that Gathering at the Lord's table is a wonderful time to come to Christ who died on the cross and rose again and say, Lord Jesus, thank you for that sacrifice you gave for me. I'm not going to live another day without knowing that I'm living for you. So I confess my sins. 
I repent and I receive you into my life. Jesus, come in and save me today. If that has never been a prayer that you remember praying and that you know has happened to you, I'd love for you to come and say, Brother Mike, today I'm here at the Lord's table. I've received Christ as my Savior and I want to live for Him. Maybe, maybe some of you this morning just want to pledge your, your commitment in a new, fresh way. You can do it right while you're there. Or you might want to come and, and say a word to me. I'm going to cut the microphone off so you can speak to me if you'd, if you'd like to do that. So, Father, as we sing this song today, I pray that your Holy Spirit will prompt us to do in our hearts and even publicly what you've called us to do. Thank you for the privilege of gathering at your table this morning. A bunch of unworthy sinners. We don't deserve what you did for us on the cross. We don't deserve the promise of a home in heaven forever. We don't deserve the assurance that Christ Jesus is going to come back and right all the wrongs and the final battle will be won. But thank you that we can examine our hearts and make things right and live for you in a new, fresh way. Help us to do it today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand together. and. Ask Amen. Let's sing together. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. turning this thing back on, but I, I know I'm the one doing all that popping and cracking and uh, so forth. I'm not talking about my bones now. I'm talking about what uh, is happening with this. Uh, there's something about the way I've got it attached when I bump up against something or I hit uh, my arms against it. So Jonathan will help me and uh, he'll bail me out of, of uh, this. Hey, I know you're going to be praying for Awakened Church as they meet this afternoon. 
they're going to have their arrangement just a little bit different. They have their own chairs, and they're going to face their platforms going to be that way instead of this way for now. You know, we're getting the goal uh, repaired, and that's going to be up and out of the way. And when that happens, they're going to be in the same uh, configuration that we are uh, here. But we want to be praying for them. Their pastor's name is Jonathan also. Jonathan Nazarian. Uh, and see there, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm sorry, sorry. Uh, I'll try to just hold my hands out like this the whole time. Uh, uh, Jonathan Nazarian and his, uh, his worship leader is Dylan. Do you remember his last name? No, his first name's Dylan. Uh, so we want to be praying for them today and praying that God's going to use them. They'll probably have some signs out in the parking area that we need to be doing too pretty soon. Jonathan and I have talked a good bit about it. We're going to quit talking about it and get some signs out there. Uh, we need to have some of those feather signs, you know, welcome and some of the other signs that, that something's going on here. You all came last Sunday and uh, they walked around the auditorium, tried to find out how to get in and uh, couldn't, but, and, but they persisted and came on and found the way. But we need to do a better job with some signage so that when people do just sort of show up like that, uh, they, uh, ew, I'm sorry, uh, they, they have a, uh, Jonathan, maybe I've got the connection a little bit loose or something. I, I don't even know, but anyway, it's okay. I'm going to quit talking so uh, I, I can quit cracking and popping and all that uh, good stuff too. Uh, so, uh, we'll be praying for them uh, today. We'll be having our Wednesday night prayer meeting over in the fireside room. We're talking about that too. You know, it's getting dark. Now people have a little bit of a problem kind of being out uh, at dark. So, we're, pray with us about uh, what to do about midweek uh, service. We want it to be where the most people can be a part of it. We've got it online and people can call in on the phone and that kind of thing. Uh, but we want it to be where the most people will be able to have access to our, all of our services, including uh, Wednesday night. So be praying with us about that. All right? Jonathan, you have another word before we close out? Well, that's uh, really the main thing we've got coming up is we hope that you come back and join us this Wednesday. Uh, I want to remind you, if you're new with us, that uh, we do uh, just want to know that you're here and um, there will be a slide that comes up. There's a QR code on there if you take out your smartphone and open the camera app, you can tap on that barcode and it should take you straight to the website where you can uh, let us know that you are here. Uh, but also you can go to dealwithchurchnashville.com slash visitor. You can do that uh, right now or you can do that this afternoon at any point during the week. But uh, we just want to thank you if you spent your morning with us this morning that you're here. If you joined us for the first time, we just want to thank you for being here. And we'd love to be able to connect with you this week. So we'd love it if you do that. Also, we want to remind you that we don't have youth group coming quite back yet. Uh, we have started the interview uh, phase of our uh, search for our next youth minister, and that's going well, and we're excited about what may come from here, and hopefully in the next couple of weeks, uh, we'll have an answer on who will be our next youth leader and be able to resume our youth ministry. But for now, uh, we will not have youth this Wednesday night, but we will have adult Bible study. Uh, that'll be over in the fireside room, like Brother Mike said. And um, is there anything that I'm forgetting, or is that everything? Okay. Well, uh, that's all the, uh, we want to remind you about this week, so I'd love if you would stand with us. And we'll sing our final song together. We'll sing Graves into Gardens, uh, just the end of that song together. So let's sing as uh, we end our service together. You turn morning into dancing. You turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. Better than you, 
there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. Let's sing that one more time together. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. You're dismissed. Have a great week, and we hope to see you next week.